blessed God, we appreciate you, the lover of our soul. Mighty God, King of glory, we magnify you. We say, hallowed be your name, O God. And Father, we are gathered together in your presence this afternoon. We want you to, Lord, please speak to us. Make our lives better. The Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Father, send your word to us today. Make us hear us and do us of your word. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in his awesome presence. And I'm going to be a sitting preacher. Because that is who Jesus is. When I, 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 I check through the Bible and I discover Pastor Sam, that especially if you look at Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, he, let, let's, 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 let's read Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. And seeing the multitude, he does what? He went up to the mountain, and when he was set, if you, see, if you look at another version, he said, and when he has sat down, and when he is seated, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he is seated, I want to be like my master. I want to be seated. Amen. Makes life comfortable. Isn't God good? His mercies endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, please, I want you to welcome your neighbor again to the presence of God. And I want you to prophesy to your neighbor that that which God has for him or her today shall be delivered to him or her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Tend the fig tree, eat its fruit. By the way, I haven't said Happy Mother's Day. So Happy Mother's Day to everyone in the house. Every woman in the house, whether you are a biological mother or not, Happy Mother's Day to you. The Lord bless you and prosper you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this morning I've been asked to speak on the topic, tender, fig tree eats its fruit. And as we all know, the scripture is taken from Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18, the A part of verse 18. And I'm going to read from two versions. I'm going to read the Amplified and the Message version. The Amplified version says, He who tends the fig tree will eat his fruit. And the Message version says, If you care for your orchard, you will enjoy is fruit. Hallelujah. Now, this proverb is written by Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived. And he used this passage to illustrate the truth about labor and reward. And this scripture points out the connection between the quality of service and the quality of rewards. The Bible says, he who tends the fig tree will eat his fruit. And to tend means to keep. It means to look after. It means to care for and to watch over something or someone. Now, tending the fig tree gives us a picture of a responsible, diligent, and hardworking farmer who looks after the fig tree in his farm. And you know, the fig tree is a high-maintenance tree. It's a tree that requires good attention. The fig tree takes years to grow. And therefore, it requires patience for it to produce fruits. And the quality of your labor over the fig tree will determine the quality of the reward you will receive. So if you care for it so well, it will produce bountifully and you will have plenty of fruits to eat. And this is what we call eating the fruit of your labor. Hallelujah. And one thing about eating the fruit of one's labor is that it is a gift from God. It's not how much labor. 
It's not how much diligent you are. It is the gift of God. The fact that you labor over something or you labor over someone does not automatically guarantee that you will reap the reward of that labor. Because eating the fruit of your labor is God's prerogative. I want you to listen to what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13, the New King James Version. Ecclesiastes 3, 13, the New King James Version. It says, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. So when you, when you see someone eating the fruit of his or her labor, that person has been favored by God. And my prayer for you is that you will receive the favor of God that will make you to enjoy the labor of your hands. Do I hear an amen? amen. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Now let's go to our topic, tend the fig tree, eat its fruit. Tending the fig tree, as we said earlier, means caring, caring for, looking after the fig tree, to ensure maximum productivity. But literally, it can mean so many different things. The fig tree can stand for so many things in your life. It can stand for your career. It can stand for your marriage. It can stand for your home. It can stand for your business. It can stand for your ministry, your material possession, and it can stand also for your children. So basically, it means that your input into all these various things that I've mentioned will determine the output that you will enjoy as your reward. Amen. Now, today being the Mother's Day, I have the inspiration to liken the fig tree to our children. That's the, the, the inspiration that God gave me, and it has been confirmed here that, yes, I, I, I'm really in tune with what the Spirit of God has for us here. And because sitting down here and seeing every activity that had, you know, preceded the, this preaching, I know that, you know, the confirmation of what God has laid in my heart to, for today. Amen. So I'm inspired to talk about tending our children. So I want to liken tending the fig tree to parenting. Parenting. That's what we are going to talk about. That's what God wants us to talk about today. So what is parenting? Parenting is the art of training, nurturing, and bringing up a child or children till they become matured, responsible, successful, independent adults. Parenting is a God-given responsibility, and it is not limited to people who have biological children. It's not limited. Parenting includes looking after children who have come under your care, even though they are not your biological children. And parenting plays an important role in shaping the development of the society because the way parents bring up their children can have either positive or negative impact in the society. Parents determine the quality of people in the nation. That is why there's a saying that the hands that rock the credo rule the nation. So poor parenting is largely responsible for antisocial behaviors, aggression, poor leadership in the nations of the world today. The Almighty God is interested in parenting because he himself is the parent of all parents. Parenting is important in the kingdom of God because parents are the vessels through whom the children are nurtured and prepared for God's use. Hallelujah. God is using our pastor today, Pastor Sam, Pastor Sarah, because somebody nurtured them to prepare them for God's use. Parenting is important in the kingdom of darkness also because parents can be vessels through whom Satan can gain access into the lives of children and destabilize and truncate their destiny. And in our modern world today, many see parenting as being stressful. Many see parenting as being burdensome. 
but, but, but that is not how God intends it to be. Because if you look at Psalm 113 verse 9, Psalm 113 verse 9, I'm reading the Passion Translation. The Bible says God's grace provides for the barren ones a joyful home with children so that even childless couple find a family. He says it makes them happy parents surrounded by their pride and joy. Happy parents. He says that the God we praise, so give it all to him. So the intention of God for every parent is to be happy and joyful. That is, as you discharge your parental responsibility by tending your children, God wants you to derive joy and happiness in doing so. So God wants every parent to reap joy as the reward of their parenting. And I pray that you will reap joy over your children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even though parenting can be very, I mean, very demanding, it is not supposed to be burdensome. It's not supposed to be stressful. God has provided every home a divine helper. A divine helper. So that every parent can have help in the home as they carry out their responsibility of tending their children. And who is that divine helper? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a divine helper that is always available to assist you. So parenting is not stressful and burdensome if you do it in partnership with the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost, it is difficult to be a successful parent. The Bible tells us in John chapter 15 verse 5 that without me you can do nothing. So it means that without you accessing the help of the Holy Ghost, you cannot be a successful parent. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, the good news translation. It says, the angel told me to give Zerubbabel this message from the Lord. He says, you will succeed not by military might or by your own strength, but by my spirit. That's Zechariah 4 6. So successful parenting cannot be achieved by power or by might. It is not dependent on how highly educated you are. It's not dependent on how, how much philosophy or child psychology that you know. It's not dependent on how often you attend seminars and conferences about parenting. It's not dependent on how well you yourself have been brought up by your parents. Successful parenting depends on how well connected you are with the Holy Ghost. Because he is your divine helper. So whether you are a single parent or you are staying together with your spouse, only the power of the Holy Ghost can help you to raise your children successfully. The Holy Ghost is a divine parent. He nurtures, he comforts, and he looks after the body of Christ. He is the one that anoints us for good parenting. He anoints us to become excellent in tending our children, in discharging our parental responsibilities. So it is therefore important for us to know who he is. So who is this Holy Ghost we are talking about? He is the third person of the Trinity. He is the one that is equal with, the, with God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Ghost is a real person. The Holy Ghost is the almighty God. He one that does the impossible. He is the power of God. He is the creator of all things. And in the book of Job chapter 33 verse 4, the Bible says, The spirit of the Lord hath made me, and the breath of the almighty has given me life. He's your maker. The Holy Ghost is your maker. He's your creator. He's the one that created both parents and children. So anything you need to know about your children, he will teach you. The Holy Ghost will help you to handle and to tend your children at every stage of their development. Because he knows your children more than you know them. And he is able to speak to their heart, even to the heart of the most difficult child. The Holy Ghost is able to penetrate through and instill the fear of God in them. Hallelujah. So as a parent, you need the Holy Ghost to help you to turn your children to become successful, to become God-fearing, and to become responsible adults. 
The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 26, John 14, 26, I'm reading the Good News Translation. It says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. So the Holy Ghost is the divine helper in your home. He's the one that will teach you the art of good parenting. If you establish a good relationship with him, he will work in partnership with you. He will help you to be an anointed parent. If you, if you tend your children well, you will enjoy them when they grow up. God will reward you with peace. He will reward you with joy. He will reward you with satisfaction as your well-tended children will grow up to take care of you. Hallelujah. They will take care of you in return. Praise the Lord. And so this morning, quickly, or rather this afternoon, I want us to look at four major ways whereby you can turn your children successfully in partnership with the Holy Ghost. Number one is nurturing. Nurturing. That's number one. To nurture means to train, to bring up, to support, to encourage, and to mold. God expects every child to be nurtured. He expects every child to be brought up properly in the way of the Lord. And you know, it is not everyone that gives birth to children that can nurture them. Only parents that have been empowered by the Holy Ghost can nurture their children in the way of the Lord. And one of the ways to turn your children is by training them. Training children is a vital role of the parent. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the King James Version. If you look at it at the message version, the message version says, point your kids in the right direction. When they are old, they won't be lost. That's the message version. So a child, you know, is like a Play-Doh, a, a plasticine. Very soft, very pliable, very moldable. A child must be molded skillfully and tenderly to become a battle, uh, I mean, a battle axe in the hands of God. And one of the major ways of molding children is through prayers. And somebody said uh, something about prayers earlier on. Prayers have so much to do in shaping the life of a person. A child whose life is saturated with the prayers of his parents will always end up well. Even if that child falls away, it will be temporarily. And we can see examples of what prayers can do in the life of a person. Let's quickly look at Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. I'm reading the Passion Translation. The Bible says, Peter, my friend, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you will stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this. After you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. So you see, it was a prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ that kept Peter from totally falling away. That prayer molded his life and enabled him to fulfill his destiny. And if you compare it with Judas Iscariot, who had no one to pray for him, that is exactly how it is with a child whose life has been saturated with the prayers of his parents compared to a child that grew up with little or no parental prayers. The difference is always seen clearly. Hannah was a praying mother. She prayed before Samuel was born. She also prayed after Samuel was born. We know her story. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to, you know, to skip you know, uh, some, some passages here because of our time. But we know the story of Hannah. She was a prayerful woman. She prayed. She prayed to get Samuel. And she prayed even when Samuel was born. And Samuel grew to be a mighty prophet of God, not because he lived with Eli the priest in the temple, but because of his, you know, the, the, the mother tended his life with prayers. She habitually saturated Samuel's life with prayers. 
Anna did not leave her son in the hands of Eli and the wayward sons. She prayed him through. And I want you to know that there is no child that becomes great by chance. Every child needs the intercession of his parents to make it in life. So praying for your children is an investment that will surely yield dividends. Hallelujah. When you are praying for your children, you need to cover, you know, the areas of their lives, the protection, spiritual growth, health, academics, social interactions, marriage, and so on and so forth. So that you'll be able to pray effectively and successfully for your children. I thank God that early in life, God, you know, revealed this secret to me. And I made it a point of duty. You know, I came across a book, Susanna Wellesley. She was a woman, a, a powerful woman of God that had 11 children. The mother of uh, um, Charles and John Wesley. In that book, I, I read that she prayed for her children, each of them, 11 of them, every day, covered them in prayers. And they all ended well. I said, eh. At that time, I think my child was just a baby. And I, I copied her. Every time after my own um, devotion, I would now sit down on the floor praying for my child. Praying for my child. And I tell you, it works. It works. So be a praying parent. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And when you are praying, you know, when you are praying for your children, you need to depend on the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27, I'm reading the Good News translation. It says, in the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our heart, knows what the thought of the Spirit is because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. So, you see, it is the Holy Ghost that helps us to pray for our children in accordance to the will of God. Not to our own will, but the will of God. So if you don't rely on his help, you will be praying hit and miss prayers. So the Holy Ghost will help you to nurture your children in the way of the Lord. It will, you know, it, it will also help you to teach them the word of God. I, I think somebody also mentioned something about the word of God. It's a confirmation of what, what God, you know, has, has, has prepared, you know, for us today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 14 and 15, and 2 Timothy 1, 5. The Bible says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned, and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture. From where? Infancy. You have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. And if you look at 2 Timothy 1.5, the Bible says, I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded now, Liz, in you also. You see, Timothy was not taught to become a great vessel in the hands of the Almighty God. And it did not happen by chance. He was taught the word of God right from infancy by his, anointed, uh, uh, his anointed mother and grandmother. As a parent, you must let your child be rooted in the word of God by setting aside time to read the word of God to them. Why they were young, why, why, why they are young. And don't bother that they, they won't understand what is being read. Don't bother. God himself has promised to teach them. Because uh, Isaiah 53 verse 13 says, All your children will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their peace. So the Holy Ghost is always available to interpret the word of God in their hearts. That's not your job, it's his job. When you work in partnership with him, he will do so. So don't think that your children don't understand. When you teach your children the word of God from a young age, they will have the knowledge of what pleases the Lord. And it will help them to depart from evil. A parent that tends his child by teaching him the word of God early in life 
will prepare that child for personal relationship with Jesus. When the child gets to the age that he can make a personal decision, it will not be difficult for him to do so because you have already prepared him. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Ghost will help you to give your child good home training. That's another thing. Home training is the informal education that a child receives to shape, to condition, to discipline them so that they can become responsible members of the society and also to become vessels of honor in the hands of God. Home training is the joint responsibility of both parents. But God has designed that the mother, the mother, to influence the children in the area of discipline. That is why the Bible says in this following scripture, uh, Proverbs 29, 15, it says, correction and punishment make children wise. But those left alone will disgrace their mother. They didn't say they would disgrace their father. Is the mother. So untrained and undisciplined children are attributed to the negligence and the failure of the mothers. And you know, there's a huge moral decadence in the world today. Because parents are failing in their responsibilities to tend their children in the area of discipline and home training. Training children must, you know, you, you must do it in love. It's not about being a very, very harsh, high-handed parent. No, that's not what God is saying. A parent that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Such a parent will not be harsh on the children. She will not use derogatory remarks. She will not use abusive remarks and resentment. Because that would damage the child's self-worth and confidence. Amen. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, Parents, don't come down too hard on your children or you will crush their spirits. So a child who grows up in an abusive environment will grow up to be aggressive. Amen. The child will be rebellious. The child will be abusive. So it is the Holy Ghost that can help you as a parent to be able to achieve all that we have talked about. And I pray that it will come to our aid. I pray that the Holy Ghost will anoint us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. How many minutes do I have left? Just let me know. Because that's part of discipline. I don't have to finish everything that I have here. Number two, being selfless and sacrificial. Any parent that works in partnership with the Holy Ghost will be empowered by him to be selfless and to be sacrificial. Are you listening, brethren? It is not every parent that has the ability to give up things and make sacrifices for the sake of their children. It's not every, every parent. Anointed parents find it easy to go to any length to ensure the well-being and the safety of their children. They don't mind to go extra miles to ensure that their children are comfortable, their children are secure, their children are well brought up. Some parents are like the ostrich. They don't really care. They don't have any concerns for their children. If you look at Job chapter 39, the Bible talks about ostrich there. Job chapter 39, 14 to 18. The Bible says, the, I'm reading the New Century Version. It says, the ostrich lays its egg on the ground and lets them walk up in the sand. It does not stop to think that a foot might step on them and crush them. It does not care that some animal might walk on them. The ostrich is cruel to its young. And if they were, as if they were not his own, it does not care that, it is, that his work is for nothing because God did not give the ostrich wisdom. God did not give it a share of good sense. But when the ostrich gets up to run, it is so fast that it lasts at the, at the horse and the rider. Can you imagine? The ostrich is a bad mother. Does he have time for his children, for her children? The ostrich does not care about her young. She leaves them at the mercy of other animals. And she doesn't care whether they survive or not. And sadly, there are some human mothers like that. 
whose children, you know, they, they, they turn out to be, you know, I don't know what to even call them in the society because they are left to survive on their own. Parents that have been empowered by the Holy Ghost have the grace to deny themselves of luxury, of comfort. Remember our mothers in those days. They deny themselves of luxury, comfort, and many other things to ensure that their children are well taken care of to the best of their abilities. And they have the grace to even lay down their lives for the sake of their children. And that attribute is from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because God the Father willingly sacrificed his only begotten son. God the Son willingly laid down his life for us. And the Holy Ghost in turn is the one that helped the son to lay down his life. So the Holy Ghost that helped Jesus to lay down his life will help you as a willing parent. So being selfless, being sacrificial is an attribute of excellent parenting. And it is lacking in many homes today. It's affecting the society. Amen. It's affecting the society. So the Holy Ghost is the helper that we need to help us in that area when we call upon him. He's the one, I, I, I will skip the third one and go to the last one because of, my, uh, because of the time. Being a good example. It is very important and very effective to teach your, ch your children by example. Paul, the apostle said, follow my example as I follow Christ. A parent must be a good example to follow. Setting standards for emulation by being spirit-filled. You, be, you cannot be a good example if you are not spirit-filled. If you are not living according to the, to, the, to the will of God, you cannot live by example. And you know children learn by example. So a parent must be a good role model in doing what the word of God says. You know, it's very unreasonable and, uh, and hypocritical to ask your children to do what you yourself don't practice. Example of the negative things that children imitate from, pray, uh, from parents are, number one, prayerlessness. You don't, prayerless lifestyle. They don't see you pray. So why, we, why should they pray? Bad dressing. They, they, they see you you, 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 you wear dresses and you bring out the twins. So they will do the same. Backbiting, shouting, abusing, rudeness, lack of respect for elders, and so on and so forth. Amen. It is the responsibility of parents to inculcate in their children moral excellence, comportment, self-respect, self-control, wholesome communication. Amen. Amen. As a parent, you are the role model for your children. You must act and you must speak just as you would like your children to do. It's by example. You must, um, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, the Amplified class, it says, it says, pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitate, imitate and follow Christ the Messiah. Hallelujah. So we parents are to follow Christ. And lead our children by example. We must teach our children to be respectful by ourselves also being respectful. We must teach our children to be thankful by we ourselves being thankful. Because if they, if they, they, all they know, all they hear from you is grudgy, eh, this and that, complaining. That's what they will do. But if you are saying, oh, Father, I just thank you for everything. I know I, I thank you. That's what they would do. In, they, they will do when they grow up. So, leading by example, the Lord will help us. The Holy Ghost is our helper. It's available in our homes if we accept his help. And so, today, as I round up, I want to encourage us to call upon the Holy Ghost to take over our, our lives, to take over our homes, to help us, to give us the grace to tend our children excellently. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I quickly, I have four prayer points here that we are going to pray quickly. You can take any position that you want.
Just raise your hand to the Lord and say in the name of Jesus. Blessed Holy Ghost, I call upon you today. Take over my life. Take over my home. Release upon me the anointing to tend my children to walk in the ways of the Lord all the days of their lives. Go ahead and talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him to release his anointing upon your life. Tell him that you surrender to him. That he will help you to tend your children to walk in the ways of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Quickly, number two, say in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, in any way that I have fallen short of your expectation as a good parent, forgive me. Let your mercy prevail. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and talk to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, if I have fallen short in any way, Lord God Almighty, as a good parent, forgive me. Let your mercy prevail for me, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number three, say in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, it is your desire that my children should grow to become successful. Let your desire come to pass in their lives. Let my children succeed exceedingly in life. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray for your children. Tell God to make them to succeed exceedingly in life. Your children will not be a castaway. Your children will not be failures. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And finally, I want you to say in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, let not my labor over my children be in vain. Let my children excel. Grant me the grace to eat the fruit of my labor. Go ahead and talk. Tell him, Lord, let my labor over my children never be in vain. Make me to eat the fruit of my labor. The Bible says that it is the gift of the Lord. It is gift from God for you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Father, don't let me labor in vain over my children. As I tend them, Father, make me to eat the fruits. Let my labor not be in vain, O oh God. 